Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm just going to give you my step-by-step -step processing workflow for Lightroom, and you can have a free PDF that outlines it as well. We're going to start out with an image that looks like this, and end up with an image that looks like this. I receive more questions about Lightroom than anything else. And because of that, I've decided to do this video. In this video, I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step Lightroom processing workflow. Now, it's my Lightroom processing workflow. I want to just stress that there really is no right or wrong way to go about processing an image in Lightroom. This is just the way that I process most of my images, and I find that it works very well for me. Also, to go along with this video, I created a PDF, and you're welcome to have this PDF for free. And it's nothing fancy. It's really just an outline of the steps that I'm going to be going over in this video. If you want to download that PDF, just uh, look at the description below this video, and there'll be a link to my website, and you could download that PDF. Now, as far as processing uh, this step-by-step -step method that I'm going to show you, I use it on just about every image. I may modify it slightly for a portrait or for a wildlife uh, shot. But generally speaking, I do it on just about everything. And I should probably say this is my color processing workflow. It's probably slightly different for black and white. And maybe if you're interested in me doing a video on that in an accompanying PDF, I'll be glad to do it. Just mention it in the comments below. All right. Now to start out, I have my Lightroom set up so that when I import images into it, Everything is zeroed out except lens corrections, meaning I have my Lightroom set up so when images are imported into it, raw files are imported into it, lens corrections get applied automatically, and everything else is zeroed out. And the reason why I specify that is quite often, most cameras, raw files, when you import them, Lightroom is going to add a default amount of sharpening and noise reduction. I don't like that. I like to control everything so I have everything zeroed out. I do have a video where I demonstrate how to change your import defaults. That's what that's called. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, and it will only show up if you're watching on YouTube, a little flag will pop up over here on the right-hand side, and you could watch that video. Also, in the description below this video, I'll link to that video. So I have my Lightroom set up, so everything's zeroed out, except lens corrections. Those get done automatically. I don't have to worry about that. Also... Throughout all these steps, you're going to see that there isn't a specific step for the local adjustments. That's the brush uh, tool, the radial filter, graduated filter, the red eye removal tool, and the spot removal tool. That's because I do those anytime. I might just see something and then like a spot and I'll remove the spot. And then four steps later, I'll see another spot and remove that spot. So I don't like specify a specific step for those. I'll do those when I feel like I want to do them. So that is kind of free form with those local adjustments. So to begin with, what I like to do, my step number one is I like to crop and straighten the image right away. Now on this image, it's pretty straight, I think. Uh, I could come in here and maybe just, maybe just tilt it slightly uh, that way. So I brought it to minus 0.21, as you can see. So that's what I like to do, number one, just crop and straighten the image. Step number two, I'll go to the basic tab and I'll pick a profile if I want to use a specific profile. For this image, I'm going to stay with Adobe Color. Then, if needed, I will adjust the white balance. The white balance looks good on here. The white uh, water is white, so everything looks good. I don't think I need to do anything with white balance on this image. Next, I move five sliders only and one slider I reluctantly will move. Those five sliders are exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So I'm affecting the tone of the image now in this step, okay? So um, this is still in step two, all right? So I'm still in step two. I did the profile, white balance, and now five sliders. The reason why I do it kind of this way is... I don't want to do anything that is going to make any noise in the image more prominent. And typically, if you adjust contrast, texture, clarity, 
at this point, you're going to make the noise more prominent. And I don't want to do that yet. Now, I do have another video where I talk about my uh, methods for sharpening and removing noise in an image. And I go into very specifics about why I do that. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, a little flag will pop up over here and you can watch that video. And again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to that video. You may be interested in that. Now, I say I reluctantly move one of those five sliders, and that is exposure. Uh, hopefully, I really nailed exposure in camera, and I won't have to do anything with the exposure slider. Uh, what I will do is I'll do highlight shadows, whites, and blacks first, even if exposure doesn't look right, because sometimes adjusting these four sliders fixes exposure, and I won't have to move that exposure slider. So in this case here, this image is very flat, very kind of muddy. Uh, the shadows... Uh, to me are kind of real muddy looking. So that's what I look at as far as highlights and shadows in, are concerned, which looks like it needs the help the most at this point. And I say a shadow. So I'm going to open up shadows and I'll bring down highlights a tad. Now I'm going to get a white and black point boy holding in the alter option key. Alter if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, click on the white slider. The screen will turn black. And when I push that up, you'll see Eventually, some colors are bleeding through. I'm starting to clip those color channels, red, blue, or green. Where you see white, that means I'm clipping all three channels. I typically will bring this all the way down so that all those colors disappear. So I'm not clipping any highlights at all. With black, similarly, I'll hold the Alter Option key in and click on the black slider. Now the screen is white, and I'll pull that down until I see some colors come through. And... Where I'm clipping all three channels, you'll see black this time. Now, clip, typically, I like uh, to clip the shadows a little bit. And when you're clipping the shadow, that means you're having no detail there at all. If you're clipping highlights, there's no detail. It's absolute white. You're clipping shadow, it's absolute black. No detail. I like to clip the blacks a little bit. It, in my opinion, gives my image a little more tonal depth. So I have absolute black all the way up through almost absolute white. And that's what I like. Especially if you're printing an image, if you have a clipped highlight and you're printing it on paper, you're not going to have any ink on that spot. And sometimes it doesn't look right. So that's why I tend to not want to clip my whites or highlights at all. But I'll clip the blacks a little bit. And when you're clipping blacks and you print it, it's all black ink. No detail at all. So enough of that. So that is the end of step two. I think that is okay for this image right now. So... Now step three, now I want to get rid of the noise. And typically what I'll do is I'll zoom in uh, on a spot that I typically would know would have a lot of noise, like the sky. And I'll go down to the detail tab and I'll go to the noise reduction slider and I'll do color noise first. And I just see a tiny, tiny bit of color noise. And as I outlined in that video I referenced earlier where I go over my sharpening and noise reduction uh, in, in uh, Lightroom, you don't have to move this color slider very much, uh, very little. And it will all of a sudden, like at number, let's say 12, there'll be noise there. And bam, at 15, there's no noise. It just disappears really that, no color noise, I should say. Uh, disappears right away. Now I'll move the luminance noise uh, reduction up to, let's say, 30. And um, there's no noise there. So I, I like to move it down to 20. So I kind of drill down. There's a tiny bit of noise there. I, I would imagine you can't even see that in the video. I'll go to 25, and it looks like the noise has gone at 25. I'll rescue some detail with this detail slider by moving it to the right. And there really isn't a lot of detail in this image. And there's a lot of haze in the image, too, and it's really kind of the mist from the falls. So, all right. So I did noise reduction. That was uh, step three. Now, step four. Next... I'll affect contrast. And there's uh, two main ways you could adjust contrast with the contrast slider and with the tone curve. I prefer to use the tone curve. Uh, the reason why I prefer the tone curve is I have a little more control where I'm applying the contrast. Meaning if I go to the point curve drop down and I go to medium contrast. By the way, if your tone curve doesn't look like this, it might be because you're using the region curve. Just click right on this little square here and you'll toggle between the two different tone curves that are in Lightroom, the point curve and the region curve. So we're going to do medium contrast on the drop down. And I have a little more control. If here, if I thought, let's say, that the darks, 
the shadows were a little too dark, then I could come up here and just push this up a little bit so they're not quite as dark. Uh, so I have a little more control. Whereas with the contrast slider, it's really uniform. As you move it up, you're going to make the darkers, dark parts darker and the light parts lighter and just kind of uniform. You don't have as much control. So that is why I prefer to use the tone curve to add contrast. So we'll do that. And oh, I think that looks pretty good. So next, then after I do that, and it's still, we're still in step four, is I will use or remove any haze if needed. And in this case here, as I mentioned, it's really just kind of the, um, the mist of the falls. So I move that to the right and a little bit, quite a bit. That's pretty high actually, 25. Uh, but I may have to come back in now and readjust to contrast. Um, after I do that, I think I'll take that up a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good right there. So that's uh, step number four. Okay, now I do clarity and texture. And if, again, I'll reference that video where I talked about sharpening and noise reduction in Lightroom. I consider clarity, texture to be part of sharpening. So this is really where I kind of sharpen the image. And I do it in this order. I do clarity first. So I'll move the clarity slider to the right. Now you may be thinking too, as I do a lot of these contrast adjustments and clarity and texture adjustments, it's messing up my white and black point that I did earlier. That's okay. Um, my white and black point was adjusted for that time. Now as I do these other adjustments, it's on top of that. I don't care that I might be clipping more of the shadows. And I rarely, even with these adjustments, will be clipping the highlights. So I don't worry about it. I don't go, I usually don't go back in and readjust the whites and blacks is what I'm trying to say. So clarity first, I move that up. Texture second, I move that up and that will usually make it kind of pop pretty good. Then, because I consider this part of sharpening, I go to the detail tab and I'll sharpen the image and I'll zoom in for this and I'll move this to the right. And this uh, doesn't need a ton of sharpening. Around 40, maybe 30 in there. I think 35 looks really, really good. And what I like to do then is zoom out and then move the radius um, while I'm zoomed out. I think it gives me a better look at the image. And I go into great detail again in that, uh, in that sharpening video that I've done on this. I think 1.5 looks good. I don't need to do detail. Now masking I am going to do. I don't need to sharpen that sky. So I'm going to hold in the Alter Option key, click on the masking slider, the screen turns white. That means I'm sh uh, everywhere is getting sharpened, every pixel. If I move that to the right, where black is, black is not being sharpened. I don't need to sharpen parts of the falls there and a lot of the uh, sky. So I think that looks pretty good right there. All right, so that was step number five. Now, step number six, color is next. So I'll go to the basic tab and vibrance and or saturation. I'll move either or both of those. I'm just going to move saturation on this image <clears throat> to the right a little bit. Maybe not that high, maybe around then. Then um, I could move vibrance too if I wanted to, but I don't think I need to on this image. I've talked about those sliders ad nauseum and previous videos of what they mean, uh, what they do. But in this image, I think uh, we'll just move the saturation slider. I will go to the HSL tab now, and I want to affect the luminance values of some of these colors. It helps give me, again, more tonal depth. Even though I'm affecting color, it will give me tonal depth. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I could make the blue sky darker by going to the luminance tab of the HSL tab and go to the blue slider and pull that down. So I made the... Uh, the blue sky, darker blue, and it adds a little more tonal contrast between the uh, clouds in the sky. Maybe that's a little too high. Then I go to yellow and I want to make the yellows brighter. So you can see how it's making the tips of these trees a little brighter. And sometimes I'll go to green and make that a little darker. But you know what? I think making that a little lighter looks uh, nice too. So I like that. So you can see it added a little more tonal contrast. Uh, to these trees. Watch, I'll turn this off and then I'll turn that back on. So you can see it just just gives you a little little better uh, look, a little more tonal contrast 
and I really like that. All right, now I'm really almost done. I rarely ever use split toning, but if I did, I would at this point. Um, I also barely use anything in the calibration tab. Oh, if I do, I will go, uh, sometimes we'll go to blue primary and take the saturation slider uh, to the right a little bit. It sometimes will make the colors pop a little more. You can see all the way up. It's really making them kind of a little bit too, too much, but maybe a little bit just for this video. So we'll do that. I think that looks pretty good. Also, uh, at this point, I will go to transform. And if I think anything is crooked, especially in cityscapes, or if you're doing some type of real estate photography, uh, the vertical sometimes, especially if you're using a wide angle lens on the outside of the frame will be tilted out and you'll want to bring those back in. You can see how this is tilted over here. So what I'll do is I'll move this to kind of straighten it out. Let's see how that's straightening out this um, observation tower over here. I think that looks pretty good. Now we have these blank pixels, so I need to constrain the crop by clicking right there. So I think that looks pretty good. And uh, let's see, I finish it off usually with a vignette and that is in the effects tab. You also could do grain and stuff here, but at this point, but I just put a darker vignette on it. And then I'm really done. I will export the image. That is my last step, step nine, exporting the image. So that is my step-by-step -step process for uh, Lightroom. Uh, this is uh, before, and this is after, before, after. And I hope that helps you. And again, remember I have that PDF. Again, the PDF's nothing fancy. It's just an outline of what I just did, uh, kind of written out step by step. Uh, you can download that from my website. The description will be in the link, or the, or the link will be in the description below this video. Easy for me to say. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>